Institute of Atmospheric Physics, Chinese Academy of Sciences. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to be here today. Uh, my topic is influence of the Southern Hemisphere annular mode on East Asian climate, uh, thanks to my co-authors. Um, the presentation is divided into five parts. Firstly, I'd like to briefly touch on the background. The Southern Hemisphere annular mode, also known as the Antarctic Oscillation, is the principal mode of atmospheric circulation in Southern Hemisphere ectropics. The same activity reflects a seasonal variation between air pressure in middle and high latitude. A positive phase of the sun means the polar low is strengthened, accompanied by a powered shift of the Wesley jet. This figure shows the power spectrum density of the SAM index. Uh, we can see it has several, uh, several significant peaks, including interseasonal, interannual, and decadal time scale. On interseasonal time scale, it was found during phase three of the MGO. The SAM index shows significant negative anomalies. Describing on average anomalous high pressure over Antarctic and low pressure over the surrounding oceans. On decadal and multi-decadal time scale, the SAM has co-variability with the underlying Southern Ocean, and a recent study found that the white fair activity in Southern South Africa is related to the SAM, to the SAM activity on multi-decadal time scale. And, and on climate change time scale, during the half past century, the SAM index shows a significant positive trend, which, uh, which is mainly caused by the uh, decreasing of ozone over Antarctic, and also uh, related to the increasing CO2 and other greenhouse gases. The changes in the southern annular mode is the driver of southern hemisphere climate change. Today, my topic is mainly concentrated on interannual time scale and try to investigate the same climate influence. Um, previous studies found that uh, the, oh, sorry. Previous studies found that the boreal spring sun could influence East Asian summer monsoon and the boreal autumn sun could influence East Asian winter monsoon. All the seasons in this presentation indicate boreal seasons. This knowledge has been, in, has been employed in seasonal prediction. Uh, in, specific, in specific, about influence of the sun on boreal summer climate, it was found that a positive phase of boreal spring sun tends to be followed by a weaker East Asian summer monsoon. The mechanism is related to the northward propagation of Indian Ocean seas of temperature anomalies caused by the sun. And, uh, on, sp uh, and uh, on the aspect of influence of the sun on boreal winter climate, the East Asia winter monsoon is also modulated by, by the sun. The mechanism is related to responses of the marina circulation anomalies to sun-related seas of temperature anomaly. And then, we, <clears throat> and then we will ask whether are there are some linkage, lead correlation between the boreal winter sun and the spring rainfall. If so, what is the mechanism? And the season uh, winter denotes December to February, and the spring means March to May. So uh, let's move on to the next part, linkage between the boreal winter sun and the spring rainfall. Uh, a little bit about the climatology. Uh, South China is located in the northern hemisphere subtropics. It is influenced by the descending branch of the Hadlacea and Philacea. And the spring precipitation over South China accounts for about 30% of annual precipitation. And South China is a key region for the growth of a variety of crops. Precipitation anomalies uh, have great impact on social economy. This figure shows the correlation between the boreal winter sun and the spring rainfall. As we can see, South China is a region with significant negative correlation. That is to say, when, 
a positive a positive winter sum is usually followed by light spring rainfall. Conversely, a negative winter sum is followed by more spring rainfall. And uh, uh, a and the partial correlation analysis is carried out to exclude ENSO signal. The negative correlation in South China is still significant after remove ENSO. To quantify the South China spring rainfall variability, we define a South China rainfall index, which is a normalized time series of average spring rainfall of 11 stations in the red box. So when do you remove ENSO? Do you remove By, it in the previous winter? A uh, previous winter oh, and previous winter and previous spring, winter. both the ENSO signal in winter and spring oh, are, both are removed. Yes. Uh, and uh, let's have a look at the preceding circulation anomalies associated with South China rainfall index. This figure shows the composite difference in winter sea level pressure and 850 millibar horizontal wind between high and low spring precipitation. precipitation. As you can see, when there is more spring rainfall over South China, a negative sum exists in preceding winter. However, when there is less spring rainfall over South China, a positive sum exists in the preceding winter. This result verifies the negative correlation between winter sum and spring rainfall. Then a question comes to mind is what is the mechanism for this leading correlation? This is an interesting question because the same signal lead rainfall, lead rainfall anomaly one season. Consider the persistence of atmospheric signal is usually not long enough to maintain one season. We pay our attention to the underlying surface, especially the ocean. So I'd like to move to the next part, mechanism for the cross-seasonal influence. Um, as mentioned at the beginning, uh, this figure shows the lead-like relation between the winter sun and the surface wind at different months. As mentioned at the beginning, a positive phase of the sun is featured by stronger westerlies in high latitudes, but weaker westerlies in middle latitudes. Uh, the changes in surface wind would affect sea surface temperature. Um, uh, through uh, modulate the ocean heat budget. As we can say, uh, in high latitude, sea surface temperature is cooler due to the increased uh, wind speed. In middle latitude, sea surface temperature is warmer due to decreased wind speed. In addition, this sea surface temperature anomalies could persist to the following spring due to large heat capacity of the ocean. And the composite analysis gives similar result. Uh, the dipole-like sea surface temperature anomalies is significant both in winter and in spring. Uh, here, this dipole-like sea surface temperature anomalies is called the Southern Ocean Dipole, uh, that is the SOD. Um, to quantify the Southern Ocean Dipole in, uh, variability, we define an index, which is a normalized difference of zonal mean, zonal mean sea surface temperature between the middle and the high latitudes. Um, and the SOD is a medium to store the winter sun signal and persist to the following spring. Uh, as you remember, a positive winter sun corresponds to a positive SOD, and a negative sun corresponds to a negative SOD. So whether the SOD is, uh, is the is the bridge linking the winter sun and the spring precipitation. To answer this, we calculate the circulation anomalies associated with the SOD. Uh, if you look at the figures, you can see when the, when the SOD is in a positive phase, the subtropical high is weaker and retreat eastward. There is northeast wind anomalies over South China which lead to less water vapor transport and less precipitation. Um, in offside, when the SOD is in a negative phase, the circulation anomalies are offside, which lead to more precipitation over South China. Mm, we next use a CAMS ray uh, experiment to verify the above result. Uh, two sensitivity experiments correspond to the positive SOD and negative SOD phases. 
Uh, this figure shows the vertical circulation anomalies uh, uh, obtained by experiment A minus the control run. In the northern hemisphere subtropics, there is anomalous descending motion in this region. And uh, meanwhile, in the low troposphere, there, there is anomalous northeast wind, stronger divergence, and stronger sinking motion. These results are consistent with the statistic analysis from the reanalysis data. Um, by now, we generally answered our first question, that is the uh, correlation between boreal winter sun and uh, spring rainfall over South China. Uh, this leads to my next question, because it is well known that the zonal mean precipitation is closely related to the zonal mean meridional circulation. Consider the influence of the SOD on zonal mean meridional circulation. It may also play a role in modulating zonal mean, uh, zonal mean rainfall. So next part, winter sun and spring zonal mean precipitation. Uh, this figure shows the partial regression of spring mass rate function on the preceding winter sun after removed ENSO signal. As we can say, anomalous clockwise and counterclockwise circulations occur relatively from the southern hemisphere middle latitudes to northern hemisphere subtropics. In specific, a clockwise cell exists in the southern hemisphere high latitude, and a counterclockwise cell exists in the middle latitude. And this anomalous circulation also exists in the tropics and northern hemisphere subtropics. Then we will ask whether this regression pattern is just a relax of climate noises or it is really a significant pattern. To answer this, we need to evaluate the significance of the regression pattern as a whole. A field significant test based on 1,000 Monte Carlo simulations is carried out. Details about this method can be found in this paper. Generally, the, person, the percentage of area that is significant at 19% confidence level is 22.7%. In the 1,000 Monte Carlo simulations, about 92% members have less, less significant area than 32.7. So uh, therefore, the regression pattern as a whole is significant at 92% confidence level. And it is interesting to note that the uh, meridional circulation anomalies related to the SAM is different from those related to the ENSO. And to further show the importance of the SOD in the cross-seasonal influence of winter sun on spring circulation, we do partial regression of spring mass rate function on the winter sun after remove the SOD signal. It is very clear that after remove the SOD signal, no significant relationship exists. This tells us the importance of the SOD in this cross-seasonal influence. So what is the mechanism for the SOD to influence meridional circulation? We know the SOD activity is accompanied by changes in meridional gradient of sea surface temperature. Sea surface temperature gradient is enhanced uh, in this region, but reduced south of, south of about 60 degree. This sea surface temperature gradient anomalies have the potential to further modify atmospheric baroclinicity. Baroclinicity increase south of about 50 degree, but decrease north of 50 degree. And the changes in baroclinicity may trigger wave adjustment. A framework based on momentum and the heat budget analysis is built to explain the responses of spring marginal circulation to spring SOD. Zonal mean momentum equation and zonal mean heat equation uh, can help us uh, understand the relationship between southern hemisphere extropical marginal circulation and uh, its relationship with SOD. And uh, to uh, further uh, test the model performance in simulate this relationship, 
we check CMIP5 historical simulations in these models. Generally, the multimodal mean give a similar pattern, but the significant in the tropics is a little weak. Although models show difference in simulating this relationship, some models give a very similar result to the observation. And uh, because of responses of spring marginal circulation to the winter sun, the spring zonal mean precipitation is also related to the winter sun. Less and more precipitation occur relatively from the southern hemisphere middle latitude to the northern hemisphere uh, subtropics. Uh, next question we are interested in is about the linkage between winter sun and tropical, and tropical circulation. Uh, here is the result of composite analysis of spring wind at 850 million bar based on the winter sun. The typical ENSO years have been excluded before the composite analysis. We can see that when the sun is in a positive phase, there is anomalous east, east wind in the central tropical Pacific, means the trade wind is strengthened. And uh, the, the increased uh, trade wind suggests a cooler system temperature. Indeed, we see the negative correlation between the winter sun and the uh, system temperature in central tropical Pacific. Uh, to further test the relationship between winter sun and the spring tropical Pacific system temperature, uh, we do composite analysis, use OLR data and rainfall data. Uh, before this composite analysis, the ENSO signal have, have been uh, removed. Um, we can see that the results are robust. Uh, uh, in the AGCM slab ocean models, in the framework of AGCM slab ocean model, since of temperature variability is determined by thermodynamic equation without ocean dynamic process, because the ocean dynamic process is, uh, is, is the key mechanism for ENSO variability. So in the framework of AGCM slab ocean model, um, the ENSO variability is very vague. A it is, therefore, it is a convenient way to remove the climatic influence of ENSO and, invest, and investigate the role of extropical factors in modulate tropical Pacific seas of temperature. This table is a list of uh, CMAP3 models we use. Uh, this result are composite analysis uh, uh, from the Arnino, Arnino case and the La Nina case. Uh, sorry, I think I missed the slide. Uh, yes, this is the composite analysis using real analysis data, Arnino case and the La Nina case. We can say uh, the Arnino like sea surface temperature anomaly corresponding to a positive sum is weaker than that correspond to a negative sum. The difference are significant. Similarly, La Nina like sea surface temperature anomalies in spring correspond to a positive sum is also weaker than that correspond to a negative sum. The difference is also negative. And uh, the framework of CMAP3 AGCM slab ocean model give us similar result. Uh, although the variation of spring tropical Pacific sea surface temperature, um, the variability uh, uh, explained by winter sun are smaller than those explained by the winter ENSO. Influence of the sun on spring tropical Pacific seas of temperature may overlay on the influence of ENSO. So you slap, the slab ocean models, they do have some kind of ENSO type variability still? Uh, yes, <coughs> they do, but it is uh, vague, but I do have some ENSO variability. Thank you. And uh, uh, finally, summary and highlight. This study uh, provides new evidence for the influence of ectropics on the tropics and beyond. Although the SAM itself is, mainly command, is mainly confined in confined to the southern hemisphere ectropics, its influence on zonal mean circulation may reach tropics and even the northern hemisphere. 
Uh, this process is an example of ocean atmosphere coupled bridge in which the ocean uh, ret retains a memory of atmospheric signal and persists to the following season, alert atmospheric circulation and finally influence local and remote climate. And uh, it provides a source of predictability. That's all, thank you.